So step seven is find unique ways to teach. And these are really about um, giving your students alternate representations of what you're teaching. So for example, um, there is this uh, really fun screensaver. I know it's, it's very kind of traditional in its look and feel, but it's called classroom screen. And if you go to the green button here, it again, in most cases, it's ideal. You could use it for remote or in-person learning, but it gives you a background and you may think, okay, what's the big deal? Well, first of all, you could change your different backgrounds, but it gives you a variety of teaching tools that you can use uh, with your students. Again, either remotely or live time. One of them is you could put a, uh, a class list in here and then when you click on this it'll create a random name so that's great for uh, at question answer for students so you get rid of those two so that's called random name generator there's a dice that you could use so just spin the dice and off we go so if you want to use that for a game or for some sort of uh, you know, anything randomizing You've got a noise level microphone that will allow you to test, uh, you know, if students are doing independent work, how noisy it is. Again, that one's probably better for in-class instruction. You've got a QR code generator. So if you put a website within this, so uh, usatoday.com, that will automatically generate a QR code so that students could hold up their iPads or devices to the QR code generator and get right to the website you wanted to share. You've got uh, this little pencil here that will uh, allow you to do uh, some free form drawing, make a little uh, sketch pad there. You've got a text box. We'll let you do things like if you wanted to say, put your agenda or your objectives for the day, you could do that nice and easy, easy to use WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get. Here you got just some visual cues. So if you wanted to put these up just to give your students a visual cue as to the mode in your classroom for uh, learning and uh, in classroom instruction. You've got a uh, stop stoplight. So green means go everybody. And when you see it turn red, we're gonna stop our activity. So again, fun, easy to do. You've got a timer, which you can set. So quick and easy timer, a stopwatch. I think you know, a clock you also know, and a calendar. So all just nice tools to use, kind of every teacher's friend in one really nice, easy spot. So that is called classroom screen. Again, is it the earth shattering end of the world tool? No, but it's a great way to use in your classroom or again, you could use it remotely as well. Screencastify is a great tool for screen recording. This is what I use for these lessons. So Screencastify is freemium for the most part. Um, I think you get maybe 30 minute videos and then you can send it to either YouTube or just within your Google Drive. Uh, Nearpod is a great tool for teaching, uh, again, remotely or in class. You can use that to uh, create an interactive lesson. Sketch noting, this is a list of resources from Kathy Schrock. If you're not familiar with Kathy Schrock, you should be. Uh, and I hope you'll dig into deeper stuff. But sketch noting is basically taking uh, a, a very old a concept of using images with text to create power lear powerful learning adventures. Uh, and note taking. So that's what this one is all about. And uh, Kathy Schrock has an amazing array of resources that I think you'll like and be able to dig into. So check that out. Uh, and then there's some digital whiteboard tools that you could use to do some creation. Powtoon creates either a presentation or a video that's a cartoon. So again, the freemium version, you can create kind of small little quick uh, cartoon videos for you or your students. Uh, Microsoft Whiteboard, again, is a collaborative whiteboard that students could uh, both uh, write on at the same time. It works best if you have Microsoft uh, Office 365, but I'm pretty sure you can share with anybody, even um, uh, anonymous. Uh, so you could use that to help. Twiddle is another one. Twiddler will create a kind of bulletin board that you could use collaboratively for notes. Just click on the green go button and it'll open up kind of a blank slate and you can have multiple people use this. And again, they can do it anonymously to protect students um, 
names so they can just you can you give them this code over here you share that with your classmates and then they can do uh, drawings within there so feel free to do that and I'll put one of these twiddlers in our um, Google Classroom so you can kind of tinker with it if you'd like and then Jamboard is by Google it's meant to go with one of their Jamboards but you can use Jamboard again to have a collaborative note-taking uh, board so you just hit the like most Google products again this is dependent on being a Google school but you can make uh, shareable uh, boards that people can edit and create with so that's Jamboard again that might be specific to your school there's solve me puzzles uh, this is from the ISTE Google for Education playground there's a lot of great resources you can use and then again this is uh, has to do with the Microsoft whiteboard and then another whiteboard and this is called class kick if you wanted to have a class work on a PDF document they could do it all at the same time and you could see them working as you, as they worked and you could actually interact with them uh, on their whatever they're working on so it's kind of like digitizing your classroom and you'd be able to look over their shoulder so to speak so those are just some I think unique uh, teaching tools that you could use both in the classroom it would probably actually be best if you're face to face with students but you could also use these ones remotely so just new twists on creating notes for students and letting them be a little more creative.